Welcome back once again, everybody. We'd love to have cash on every chance we can get. And that sentiment, well, it rings true with our next guest as well. Joining us now to continue our coverage of this historic indictment of President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, is Mike Davis, who serves as the founder and president of the Article 3 Project. Mike, welcome back to the show. An interesting day. Uh, what are your top line thoughts on this breaking news? I would say don't be fooled by this indictment, by this David Weiss, this uh, Delaware U.S. attorney who was picked by both Democrat home state senators. This is just more cover-up by David Weiss and Merrick Garland in the Biden Justice Department. Remember, David Weiss let serious tax evasion charges, uh, the statute of limitations expire on serious tax evasion charges against against Hunter. He buried evidence deemed credible by the Pittsburgh U.S. attorney of the Biden's alleged foreign corruption schemes. And he and David Weiss attempted to give Hunter a sweetheart deal with backdoor immunity until it got blown out of the water by the uh, Delaware uh, judge who who, call, who who called him out on this. Uh, what they're what they're trying to do with these gun charges, notice how they're not charging for being an unregistered foreign agent or tax evasion or foreign corruption or anything that could tie to President Biden. They're pursuing this path to make it look like they're being tough on Hunter. At the end of the day, Hunter will not spend one day in jail. This will all go away. Uh, uh, President Biden will pardon Hunter right before he leaves office or David Weiss will cut a sweetheart deal with Hunter again like he did the last time. And in the meantime, they're gonna be able to rebuff uh, questions and subpoenas from Congress, questions from reporters, questions from the American people. I, I, I totally agree with you because as soon as I heard these charges come down, it's like, eh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, but what has been interesting, and I, and I caution myself because for the last six years, we have heard mainstream media with respect to Donald Trump say the walls are closing in, the walls are closing in. So I don't even want to use that phrase with respect to Joe Biden. Legally, I don't know what's going to happen with Hunter Biden. I'm with you. I don't think he'll ever see jail time. I don't think this will ever rise to any sort of serious occasion affecting his life personally. But I wonder what the implications are politically. Uh, and again, I don't want to use that phrase, the walls closing in. But is this, I, I'm seeing all across media, mainstream media, them starting to actually recognize some of the downfalls of Joe Biden, some of the times that he's lied with respect to what we are seeing now. Is this the beginning of the end? Well, the, uh, Joe Biden was the Democrats' useful idiot, and he's no longer useful. He's actually an albatross around their neck. If you look at the polling, President Trump is, uh, uh, it, it looks like President Trump's going to win back the White House on November 5th, 2024. And this corruption, uh, the economy, gas prices, inflation, interest rates on homes and cars, uh, we're in a malaise in this country, right? And President Biden is compromised. He's corrupt. Uh, our This has very damaging consequences for our country when the president of the United States is corrupt and compromised. There's very little chance we would be uh, in a proxy war with a nuclear superpower, Russia, in Ukraine, but for the fact that Joe Biden took this $10 million bribe, allegedly, from Burisma. And uh, Putin has evidence of this in the form of 17 audio tapes, 15 with Hunter, two with Joe. Putin smells Biden's weakness. He smelled it before when Joe Biden was the vice president who Obama put in charge of Ukraine. Putin took Crimea, uh, four years of peace under Trump, and now uh, Biden's back and Putin's trying to take the rest of Ukraine. We're going to spend $100 billion because of Joe Biden's $10 million alleged bribe, right? And how, how many more hundreds of billions of dollars will we spend? How close will we get to a nuclear war with Russia because uh, we we make this such a desperate situation. Joe Biden should resign, but he 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 doesn't have the grace to do it. So President Trump is going to beat him like a drum on November fifth, twenty twenty four. I think you're right, and you and you mentioned pardon. I want to show everybody this clip and remind everybody. Karine Jean Pierre, who is usually pretty uh, muddled in her messaging and leaves the door open on practically every answer she gets, for once she was unequivocal. Check this out. Let me go back to the first question of the briefing. I know you said not a lot's changed since yesterday and that it's a personal matter, but from a presidential perspective, is there any possibility that the president would end up pardoning his son? No. Well, is there, I, you, I just said no. I just answered. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, she was pretty clear there. Um, 
I, I don't know Joe Biden personally, but I do wonder if, if it came down to, because we saw what happened with Gerald Ford when he pardoned Nixon, and that was ultimately, I think, the end of his political career. If it came down to pardoning his son and ending his political career or the binary, what do you think he would choose? Well, I, I think that's actually framed incorrectly by the people in D.C. If Joe Biden pardons Hunter, it's going to, uh, it, it's the problem with that, if is it's going to make it where Hunter Biden can co uh, be called to testify before Congress. He won't be able to. He won't be able to raise the Fifth Amendment, whether uh, he's pardons, whether he is gets some uh, immunity deal with a plea uh, plea waiver from David Weiss. They can't do that. They're going to drag this out until November fifth, twenty twenty four. They're going to drag this out to the election because they know the second that hunt, the, the second Hunter does not uh, does not does not face criminal charges, he no longer can raise the Fifth Amendment, and Congress can haul him in to testify. And when that happens, uh, he could blow the lid on his father. He won't be able to ple plead the Fifth. And if he lies or obstructs, then President Trump's Justice Department can prosecute Hunter for lying or obstruction after January 20th, 2025. Yeah, well, we, we might end up having to see how durable that father-son relationship is, uh, especially especially with respect to uh, Hunter Biden's former attorney, Chris Clark, the comments that he made regarding, he said, if the DOJ goes after Hunter, basically threatened to put Joe Biden on the stand. Is that something that we as Americans might see someday? Uh, it, it would be, it, I don't know if that's possible for Joe Biden to be called to testify as a sitting president, first of all, he would have his own, he would ha have his own criminal jeopardy. So Joe Biden would have to plead the Fifth Amendment. But I don't, I don't know if it's settled that you can have a president go testify like this in a in a case like this. There was the Paula Jones case where President Clinton had to testify in a civil context in a deposition. But I, I don't know if this, I don't know if this would fly because of the separation of powers. But that being said. There's no chance that Merrick Garland would have made David Weiss the special counsel if they didn't fully trust David Weiss. They know that David David Weiss has protected the Bidens for years. He was handpicked by both Democrat home state senators. I don't think we have to uh, wait with bated breath that Hunter Biden is going to spend a day in jail or Joe Biden's going to be called to testify. It's not going to happen.